Here we are, hitting up events, drinking our way through Chicago beer, and trying not to miss a thing. Yeah, because, you know, got a cork popped out, boop, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, all you have to do is add some fruit, stir it up, and ride that milkshake wave. Whenever I see him, I gotta take a photo with the most decorated brewer in Chicago, Jonathan Cutler. It'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Sometimes you want a small beer, but really, you want a big beer. You gotta take in all those big aromatic hops. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Waiting in line for a bottle release? You should have never been a fad. The black IPA is delicious. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And I think with last week's episode, and now this, we might just have to change ourselves to Evanston Beer Pass. Evanston Beer Pass? No one in Evanston's doing it. I mean, <laughs> right? you know. Cover Evanston every week, the same three. I mean, there's one in Evanston we don't go to. Package Pig. Oh, okay. They don't package. Right. And it's too cold to sit on a patio. Exactly. They may as well close for the so, season, like, like fucking. But uh, this episode, because if you're just listening, you don't see what's in front of us. We have the Oktoberfest from Sketchbook and the Oktoberfest from Temperance, which we went to this lo- this lame Oktoberfest party. Um, uninspired for L- sure. Laster, right? Yeah. It was um. It was their anniversary party slash Oktoberfest, mm-hmm. but it wasn't a bash in the way that we know other Oktoberfest to be. Yeah. Local Oktoberfest. Mm-hmm. So it's funny because I thought this was um, double clutch because it's the same, almost same color scheme, but no. Right, with the little patch or the diamond, blue diamond thing going. Yeah, both, uh, both Sketchbook and Temperance are tall boys too. Mm-hmm. So we went to Temperance. I went and picked these up at Sketchbook. Sketchbook was in our lineup last year, and I think it fell somewhere in the middle, mm-hmm. maybe high middle. Uh, Sketchbook? Yeah. Okay. If I remember correctly, I'd have to go back and watch the video. <clears throat> Down on the table, we do have our lineup of coming soon of all the ones we're going to be drinking and breaking down and seeing where they all rank. I went to Benny's, got a mixed six pack. The only non-Illinois one I got was this uh, Surly Oktoberfest. So. Yeah, shout out to Surly. They had Darkness Day this weekend. Right. But we got a Steel coming up, Revolution, Surly Noon Whistle, Gooses is here, Cruz Blanca. I didn't even know they had an Oktoberfest. Me either. Why they would have one as a... Well, you know, they ha- their love for uh, Vienna Lagers knows no bounds, Brad. Yeah. When they first opened, there was like four Vienna Lagers on for some reason. <laughs> so... So it's going to be interesting. We may do this either next week or the week after. I think I'm trying to get someone else to come and help us with this. Okay. It's a, it's a big lineup. Yeah. Well, it's looking like we're up to about 13 right now. <laughs> and I have a workforce downstairs. Too. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we're going to sip on these. Uh, maybe we'll give our opinions on one to pick here. Oh, you're already ready? What, what do you think of the sketchbook? One? Um, Not having it since last year. I don't know if it's time of day, but it's a great way to start my evening. Tastes great. Um, less filling? No. It's on the sweeter side, I feel. It's you think so? sweet. I think it's just right. Just sweet. I think it's just right. Um, I thought the um, Lager Town was on the sweeter side for me so far. And I, surprisingly, so was the Metropolitan. Right. I thought those were both sweeter than this. So for me, this just this hits... This is well balanced, and it's not muted. Like I enjoy, maybe maybe there could be a little more roast. Okay. If anything's roasted, I'd say the. If anything's muted, I would say the roast. All right. Um, well then, let's see this temperance one. This is one we had a few weeks ago. I haven't dope back into this four pack, so kind of I was mad to see what happens. I was mad at them because of the whole, you don't have, you can't have a mug thing. But I actually liked it when we had it on draft. Here. Huh. Well, a little less sweet and almost sharper than the than the sketchbook one. Oh, so you think like a little more, um, a little more, a little more bitter? Think do you know, think just hot? Like, or maybe maybe sharper is not right. Maybe like milder taste, just like 
it like goes away very fast. Where the sketchbook maybe was lingering a little bit, like sweetness. I think the sketchbook one has more to say than this one does. Yeah. Yeah. This one, I know what you mean. I almost finished this kind of thin. Right. It's easy drinking. I mean, hey, I got that. That's kind of nice. How's Ma- that? Malt body, crisp finish. Sunny autumn days. What the fuck? Oh, that, no, that's fair. Sunny, <laughs> sunny autumn days. Oh, is the name of their Oktoberfest? Well, that's just what it oh. says. I think that's just your descriptor. Oh. You see the uh, Aunt Annie's pretzel on the back? Yeah, that is a full <laughs> Aunt Annie's pretzel. That's someone <laughs> on their clip art suggestion just took that. That's fake. I like that. <laughs> cool. I, I won't turn down an Aunt Annie's pretzel if I'm in a mall for whatever reason. I'm not yeah. that I'm ever in a mall. You're going to Hot Topic and you need a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, do you want to start with this news of... Before we get into where we went to, this Metro news that we talked about last week, which I'm finally, I caught up all of our episodes. All caught up. Oh. They're all posted. Everyone should have listened to them all. You know, all five, 10 years of episodes, you should be caught up. I'm, I'm raising the roof right now. <laughs> but on the last episode towards the end, we talk about this info that dropped about Metro filing for bankruptcy. And it is Chapter 11, Okay. it turns out. We had no idea what this meant. The next day after posting that, Metro put up a Instagram post that like, this is true. Um, we're probably going to talk more about it later. They still, I don't I haven't seen anything else. But that they're like, we're trying to figure out how to survive. And it's no, uh, it's not a surprise. We're going to be struggling as patio season is ending. That's kind of what they said. Wow. So th- this is happening. So it felt a little like it's winter. People come to the tap room last. Help, help us. Yeah, right. Like, because beer, I mean, because beer is for people who like beer. Right. I mean, so we built this place for these people, for you people. So if you really, if you like it, like you say you do. You need to come. Come out. Help save us. I mean, we should have known this was real when you look at, um, you know, it's loosely related, but. Half Acre, we we um, professed our love for Half Acre's fader once we heard it was going away. Yeah. And I think the VP of Half Acre was like, well, you fuckers weren't buying it. So you can love it all you want, but what does that mean if you don't buy it? It's still like around. There's, I was at There's Half Acre. I went to Half Acre to pick up the, the sours um, from keeping it together. And there was like a, one of the three coolers was all fader. A lot of fader. One third of the cooler was fader. You look like assholes out here telling everyone (laughs) fader's gone. And everyone's like, there's so much fader. This speaks to how much they made, I guess, right? This can't be fresh. I mean, this can't be brand new fader. Right. If fader's going away. Or it's basically like, see, no one's buying it, and we can't even get rid of it. We're not even making it, and we can't get rid of it. There was a, uh, I think in Homer Glen, there was a liquor store that sold... Rev's Oktoberfest for two ninety nine per six pack they posted. I saw which uh, out deep south burbs is Homer Glen. Which that goes into our conversations too about Metro about these are all lockers. The the goose rumor that you know we still have we have no clarification on that. And that is a wild speculation, Brad. Yeah, but that beer sales are down, and so that this liquor store is selling Oktoberfest for two ninety nine. Means there's too much Oktoberfest. Flat or slow growth at best, I think, right. is how the Brewers Association describes it. And the Oktoberfest problem, the bad problem, as we're drinking Oktoberfest, come November, I don't want these. That's the problem. That's why I'm not even it mad. Says October on it, and I don't. I'm not gonna drink this not in October. When people posted that they were rolling them out into July, I wasn't really that mad because yeah, as soon as uh, in two more weeks, are you? The idea of drinking it won't make sense for a lot of people. Right. Especially um, buying it. I'm definitely, maybe I'll, I'm still probably going to drink the ones in my fridge. Yeah. But I'm not buying new Oktoberfest come November. Slippery slope. It's just like, uh, well, I think pumpkin beers you might actually, if you're in the pumpkin beers, you would buy them for a longer period of time than you would Oktoberfest. If you're into them, but. Yeah, who's even making those? Shipyard and Southern Tier. And uh, maybe, probably not even Dogfish. Uh, maybe Sam Adams. Well, Wild Onion makes a good one. 
I dare to say the best wild onion beer is their, is their, is their pumpkin. The onion brewery makes great <laughs> pumpkin beer. Mm. It's like the Chinese place has great tacos. <laughs> Honey butter fried chicken, best thing there is the mac and cheese. I'm trying to tell you. Pimento mac and cheese. I go to Corridor for the salad. Mm. <laughs> See? We can, we, can go all, we can go all day here. You know? But back to the Metro thing. This would suck like a lot and kind of be like a i don't know a a sad day for chicago beer if metro you know had to close a door yeah um well we talked a little bit about chapter 11 i don't know if it was on the show or not we were talking about how chapter 11 i think if you just read the definition basically says hey we're leveraging the state and we're filing for our rights as a business in the state to protect our stuff while we go seek other funding. Mm -hmm. So chapter 11 is a protection that's offered. So I, it sounds like that's what this is. Right. So um sounds like there's, there's time to go find uh, different more funding. Money. Find more money. Right? Uh, that's what it sounds like. The, with AB selling all those other brands to uh, Tilray and with no beer sales being down, and a brewery being around for 10 plus years, who's coming in? Like, you're coming in for the space to invest in this, them and their space, not even them and their beer, right? Interesting. Because that is a great space. Um, what was What is it called? Rockwell on the Gardens? Right. Rockwell on the River. Where, you know. I was just watching a wedding documentary uh, like today. It was more of a reel than a documentary, mm. but it's it's well known as a wedding space, and they have watching a thirty second <laughs> clip of this documentary. <laughs> it's a well known space, and the tenants are all there. Uh, fucking uh, the distilleries there. There's a coffee shop there. There's a well coffee producer. Uh, the Small and Smoke, I think, is building out there, oh, okay. and it's known as a wedding venue or an events venue. Okay. So I mean, there the space is operating at an all time high. It's no longer the weird under construction route when you get to Metro walking right. through this building. So things seem to be coming together for Rockwell and the Gardens as a, as a venue. And now this news comes out that Metro might be in trouble. So. Where this space, if Metro wouldn't have went in there, would it, would it even been the space it is now? Yes. Yes, it would have. Please. Vaulted ceilings, fucking killer patio on right. the river. They're putting a... Um, I, right. But it could, it may not have ever seen the like success of people actually going there all the time, if Metro wouldn't have went there, right? Yeah, maybe. It's a it's a so. If it, Urban Brew Labs went in there, this is my point. If Urban Brew Labs went in there, or let's just say, um, the the perch. <laughs> let's We're just, using like, <laughs> places that went out. If, let's just say if the perch went into Metro space. Let's just say the perch because that was the rumor. That, oh, originally, yeah. That Finch was going to go in there. Let's just say Finch went in there. You don't think it would be full in the summer, right? Like, look, that space is killer. Yeah, okay. If you, the people, will, people go to space. So the space, the space one, and yeah, maybe that's what I'm saying too with Metro beer for as much as we like it and beer people like it, it's not working outside that space, right? I, either, either that or... There is an insane overhead involved with those type those that amount of tanks and that amount of square footage to run a run a business. Right, There's a ton of overhead involved in that. We have no idea what is happening in the marketplace with their beer, but we do know they are a lager only brewery. Right. So you have to want a lager when you pick up their beer. That that was a novelty for a long time in this town. In fact, I think. They, I think one of their conversation was in 2009, what do we do? Do we make another IPA? Everybody's right. making IPA. So this was their, 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 um, you know, this, now, this was their niche. Now everyone makes a great lager. It's no longer a novelty. Um, everyone makes a good lager. You know, of some degree, <clears throat> if it's a Vienna, if it's a Hellas, a Kolsch, a Pilsner, like everyone has one. Right. And it's not unique. To be like, we just brew these Dortmunders. You know who? Um, <laughs> you know who used to make a lot of lagers? Um, Motoro. Okay. That was their thing for a long time. Where are they now? 
So this this idea and then the top selling style of beer, you know, uh, globally is lagers. So I think, you know, over 10 years, you're just starting to see the craft version of lager expand to, like you said, even people who don't make lagers year round. Mm -hmm. So it's like maybe that's got uh, something to do with this. Maybe it's purely the space that they're in and the agreement on that space. Yeah. Maybe, maybe both. Who well, we were talking on the pre-show. <laughs> These other breweries that you think of are lager-only breweries, the art histories, the yeah. dovetails, the uh, goldfingers. Right. They're not. Made, goldfingers may be the only one. I think you're right. Um, you know, uh, Bill and Hagen, I think, are the guys at uh, Dovetail. And they'll tell you. I think it was at you know one of these parties. They'll say, "Hey, people think we're a lager brewery, but we really focus on um, continental European styles." You know, so there's always a half on. I was there's a saison. They got four wild ales on right now. Okay. You know, their Creek series. You know, they they their their catalog. I think people know them to be a lager brewery, but the reality is they're brewing way more than just lagers, and. Um, the art history guys, I kind of commented when I was there one time, I was like, yo, there's there's five IPAs on here. And I think their comment was, well, we were making lagers. And now that we don't have to make lagers because we got uh, uh, Geneva, Geneva Lager, Lager Works, works. <laughs> you're going to see us do what we really like to do. Okay. So now this, this was kind of, unless you talk to them, I was like, yo, this is kind of interesting. People's perception versus what these folks are actually making. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so that means if you rule them, goes out, when you rule those guys out, it's Metro and Goldfinger. Right yeah. If Metro came out, you know, next week and was like, here's our IPA, would it be, it would have to be like groundbreaking to move the market or would it just be enough to maybe like get some of those people to like come in and support them in the winter? Like wow. Basically like, hey, we got a, we did an IPA and a stout. Like, come and let us know what you think. Wow. Um, well, lager's the hardest thing to make in beer, right? Right. There's no flaws. There's nowhere to hide flaws, I should say. So, I mean, if you can make a lager, then surely you can make these other styles. Right? Right. Yeah. Um, that just wasn't their thing. But, you know, I really like that. I was reminded of, like... The dark lagers and those copper lagers, and you know, because I think Dynamo is like a six point seven percent, like uh, dark brown beer, mm -hmm. and I was reminded of the range of lagers and how it's not just one thing, through Metro. So I was like, as a learning experience, I'm like, God damn, you forget about the, or the the Schwartz beer with the coffee, you forget like this is a lager, but man, it tastes nothing like a summer crusher. So right. I'm like, man, I learned that at Metro. I, so that would that would really be a bummer if this shit goes south like it like it sounds like it might yeah or do they need some more of the presentation we've seen at like the slow pours look at hopewell has a slow pour pilsner they do ravinia has a goldfinger that's true goldfinger's got the full-on lucre oh. system with the horizontal tanks and the different temperatures and all that kind of shit but what's the thing where you like put the hot poker what is in that the, called? In the beer. Um, it's like that. It's like a winter warmer thing. Couldn't Metro do that? So you think it's just a matter of introducing different styles? But they don't have problems getting people to come to the tap room, right? Like that is the like other thing. Yeah. The tap room's busy. It's difficult to speculate when you don't know what the factors are that's causing it to be um, problematic. I guess. Yeah. Right. We don't know all the factors, so. You know, if we look at what Baderbrow did, another brewery that focused on lagers. <laughs> Baderbrow, we know for a fact that Baderbrow went into that giant space that's now uh, Moody Tongue. They say that's uh, South Loop, but that's really Bronzeville because it's okay. past 26th Street. Um, oh, but they went into it. The developer wanted to uh, turn that into condos, but Baderbrow said, hey, we'll, uh, we'll double our rent after the first year if you let us build this brewery in here, you know. And ultimately, that's why they had to leave because they were over there. They didn't over their head on rent. Like that's kind of that's a known thing, and they had that's to sell all that shit. Of the metro problem with the rent. Like, Possibly. No, we know it's like. The oh, because that's what the that's what the story in like the trip said. Yeah, a while ago. What was it like? Um, either they were paying for a space that doesn't exist, doesn't or pay paying for a, a floor that doesn't exist in their square footage. Yeah. Or they weren't paying for it. 
but they were holding the money back. So then now they owe back rent for space that didn't exist. If it's a technicality like that, I, I would assume they get out of this then, right? If that's all it is, right? So I, I'm rooting for that. Because I really like those guys. Yeah. So that's a little more on, I guess, the info we have and don't have. And as we sat with it a little more and thought about some of these other breweries um, in Illinois and just kind of where they're at and kind of where the state of beer is, I thought it was like kind of interesting to revisit this. It's an interesting observation for sure, right? Like, um, because it's weird to say, like, well, they only focus on lagers, and that's and that might be the issue because if you look at the opposite side, most other breweries just focus on ales, and it doesn't. It's not you know what I mean. It's so, not a problem, so right? we can't say that focusing on lagers is the issue necessarily because on the flip side, people focus on ales, you know, and we don't say well they focused on ales. That's why fucking uh, you know urban trust, urban urban renewal, and uh, Sm- uh, smiley, and all these other fuckers, uh, they focus on ales. That's why they went out. So it you know it doesn't work on both sides. So maybe we maybe we shouldn't say. That it's a nail, it's a it's a logger thing. Maybe we shouldn't say that, right? Right. So, but who the fuck knows? I don't know. It, but it is interesting to wildly speculate. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's not an IBA thing that Salamoth is like. We got to make an entire brewery that just makes a entire brand that just makes fresh IPAs. I think the crews you've seen last the longest in this town pivot like it like it ain't shit they pivot uh half acres entire core four of beers is all gone except for daisy cutter we sat down with Salomo. it's actually a good point we sat down with Salomo. Salomo used to be a uh, belgian and saison brewery in the beginning and it was all about vikings and they pivoted you know right. and they went i hard think in the ipas and uh non-beer with the seltzer goose has come out in 40 years or whatever it is 38 Goose has come out with hundreds of different fucking beers. They're throwing everything against the wall. I think people who these breweries the longer you see, the ones that are been around for the longest in most cases found themselves pivoting. Unless you're Peace, who doesn't package in their destination and they make pizza. You're right. You go there for the pizza, and it happens to make beer. Right. No one is currently going there because it's a great brewery. I'm on a brewery call. I stop at Peace. You're probably not saying that. No. Yeah. Even look at Unani. Unani's 10 years in. Unani was a Belgian brewery. Now they're fucking sours and uh, sweet-ass stouts and IPAs, <laughs> right? Those stouts are so sweet. Yeah. But, yeah. They pivoted, yeah. So, so I mean, that's a con- I mean, the breweries that are 10-plus years, you've seen all of them be different from what they were when they started. So, you know, I think keeping, keeping it the same is a very cool thing if it works, right? Right. So. Because even... Uh, one more on that, the Haymarket. Oh, there were a lot of like Belgian single double kind of that was their like. Uh, Angry Birds was a hoppy Belgian. Yeah. Yeah. And you know now they're kind of all over the place. Yeah. I don't so. even know what. I don't even know what they would be classified as now. When I think of Haymarket, I don't even know what I think of. Oh yeah, right. Because they were known for like Belgians and IPAs, basically, mm-hmm. and all oh, in killer stouts. I love Defender, and um, yeah. Oh, but Cruz Blanc has even got a Oktoberfest here. Yeah, yeah. The Vienna Lager Brewery <laughs> <laughs> pivoted into <laughs> pivoted into anyway, anyway, all right. So uh, we usually do the rambling on the back part of the show. Oh, so. fuck! We've been doing that for twenty minutes. Yeah, so all the people that usually turn us off. Or skip to that. There you go. I think the um, a disclaimer is like we sound good on one point five. Okay. Every time I play us, it's one point five. It sounds great. Half hour and done. Sure. Yeah. Cool. So then the stops you made it to, and this kind of led into all of this talk because you were out at Art History. Yeah, man. Uh, shout one out of to the great lager breweries. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, I like Art History, and I was at the bar one last last about a year ago. And they were talking about how they love making uh, Roush beers and how, you know, it's like a really around Oktoberfest time. And in fact, one of their Oktoberfests is called Smoketober because it's got, I don't know, 20% uh, smoked malt in it. Okay. Smoked oak. S- oat smoked malt. So I went out there because they said, hey, we got four smoked beers on. Not a lot of people are making smoked beers. Um, uh, Alarmist 
has a smoke beer on in the city proper. Who else has a smoke beer on? You know, smoke, smoke brewery focus. Just a smoke beer. <laughs> <laughs> there was a crew like that up in uh, like Minnesota at one point. I don't know if they're still Smoky, around. Smokies. All they made, all they said, we're making smoke beers all year. I don't know. I don't know how that definitely worked. not around anymore. <laughs> um, who else was I gonna say? Oh, I went out to Sound Growler and they had a, uh, two smoke beers on. One of them, not that great. The other one, pretty good. Oh, so that's why I ended up at fucking... Uh, you went history. there for the smoke. I went there for the smoke. Bring on the smoke. There were four smoke beers and they have a patio. So I'm like, bring it on. Now, it's just in a strip mall. But they occupy like two storefronts in a strip mall. The two corner storefronts. So right next to the Ace Hardware, it, two storefronts and it's a brewery. What? Boom. Let's fucking do it. Do they... On the smoke beer thing, no. if you're a, a smoker... Do you enjoy smoke beers more or less? Do you think there's a is there least, is there a correlation? Right. Is it does it remind you of if you're a smoker? Does it remind you more of smoking, or does it remind you more of smoked meats? Right. Right. Like, or if you're barbecue enthusiast or a smoker, do this? Does this smoke beer talk to you? Right. In either capacity, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's happening right now, <laughs> but you know, um, on this, but you know, uh, shout out to Double Clutch. I was listening to a Double Clutch interview, and they were saying that their smoke beer, which has won twice at JBF, right. was inspired by a Bomberg or Bamberg style that uses like one hundred percent smoked malt. Okay. I, that in that was the alarmist one was called. Bamberg, right. which is in Germany. So, right. So I'm not going to make it to, but I'll be like right there. I mean, you can probably, you're close enough to probably get 100% smoked malt beer. I might be able to, but so, I got to take a bath in beer. I got to. Oh, you're doing a beer bath? Yeah. Man. There's one in the city. I know, no one ever talks about it. Um, <laughs> I mean, also, there's a beer spa. That's right. There is a beer spa in the city. People. Oh, it's on Milwaukee. Oh. Um, <laughs> Double Clutch said they were inspired by. Uh, 100% smoked malt beer, right. and that's what led them to make their beer. They said 100% is too smoky, but ours is 75%. <laughs> so I was listening to that, and then I'm look, thinking about how fucking uh, art history loves smoked beers. So I'm like, well, take me to the range of what you like, how you like it smoked, right. and that's why I went. Was it different levels of smoke to for the sh- For sure. There's different levels in these beers. No, so those, what they like, this is the 10%, this is the... 40, this is the 80, this is Yeah, the so the smoked Tober, which I think is the best one, is uh, 40%. Okay. They have a smoked porter. And, you know, I love the Alaskan smoked porter is pretty good. Yeah. And a smoked porter, which was like, I think, 40%. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I had to take pictures of the other ones. But um, but there was a smoked Hellas, the smoked porter, the smoked Tober, and then just a straight up Roush beer. Okay. So those were the four. Smoked Hellas. Oh, yeah. There is that. Yeah, the smoked Hellas. Man, I don't know. I would probably, if I saw four like that, I'd probably think the porter is going to be the most enjoyable. But uh, is it Salmoth that has the smoked one? Or they got the Fooder, Fooder Hellas. I think they have the Fooder Age Hellas. So, so Oak Hellas. The smoked Hellas Keller beer was Beechwood smoked. So Beechwood yeah. is, would be a lighter, yeah. a lighter type of smoke. Because um, Beechwood won. But not that's off of the, the actual. That's the beach, beach like Beachwood Age Budweiser. Yeah. yeah, and they say Beachwood, and they bleach the beach. Not they bleach the beach, <laughs> they bleach the Beachwood beach so that it actually is taking flavor out. Huh. And they call it. They say it's Beachwood Age because it sounds fucking sexy, but it's not imparting any wood flavor at all. Because they bleached. They it. bleached it, and so you're drinking bleach. <laughs> they're really? ta- they're using it to take flavor out. That's what other brewers say about Budweiser. Budweiser doesn't say that. That's what other brewers say about Budweiser. It has to add something, otherwise you wouldn't do it. It does add something. It adds nothing. <laughs> it's bringing the addition of nothing. It's, 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 they're taking out, is what I hear. Um, okay. Hmm. The smoke porter was a cherry wood. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, and the... Uh, the one with the most smoke is a Beechwood Goodnight Bomberg. That's a Roush beer. That's a 40% bill of smoke. Nice. Okay. So, yeah. That's a fun little different experience. Yeah. Um, if I had to rank them, I would say the Smoketober is the best one. Okay. It's really good. And so you were out there in Geneva and you only did that with um, 
with Penrose, literally spitting distance. Yeah. You didn't go? No, I was like, you could walk to it. Right. No. I went to Aurelio's because I was just hammering off smoke beers. <laughs> And I didn't want to try this little barbecue place I had there, okay. but you know, Aurelio's is um, it's a it's a local chain, but I think a lot of them are usually like I don't know South Burbs maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know a lot of Aurelio's in the city or in the North Burbs, so went to Aurelio's. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Um, cool. Then you also made your way over to Beguile and Dovetails. Yeah. So the next day, um, smoke diversity. I put on I put on some uh, I put on my Guinness jacket for the first time. Oh, nice! I wore my Guinness jacket and um, I wore my. Any compliments? No, nobody noticed it. No. You want to know something fucked up? Um, I was standing on the wall at Beguile where they let people use crayons, kids and shit, draw on the wall. So I'm leaning against the wall because I think I'm a cool guy, and my entire Guinness jacket got covered in fucking chalk. Oh no! So then I had to take it off and run to Beguile's bathroom and be in there for ten minutes with my yeah. with my terry cloth wiping it down. It was ridiculous, but yeah. Oh, but I went to um, day two of Oktoberfest anniversary. Nice. How was that? These beers are going down, by the way. Uh, but crack one over. We'll all right. Uh, you know. Sketchbook. All right. Um, you know, you're more likely. I'm so glad that they joined forces for this party because I'm more likely to go to that than I am to just go to either Dovetail or Bagal on their own. Is, is that weird? Uh, yeah, I'm more. <laughs> Oddly enough, I'm more likely to go to a Beguile event than yeah. there would be a Dovetail event. There's something, I don't know, just, I will go to Dovetail, I mean, I will go to Spiteful, why not Spiteful, Beguile for like, the pajamas release yeah. or something like that. Dovetail's like, we got our new creek. Eh. It's cherry. If, if I make it there, I Sour cherry. There you yeah. go. i tell you something. I'd. We should have given Beguile more credit all along for this party because when I went to Beguile's fucking anniversary party with uh, Balls and Cans, I th- if that was this year, I think it might have been the best party I went to all year. Oh, it was this year. It was I so, it. it was so, I yeah, why it. are you missing all the parties, man? It was good. It was very good. I'm not a bit, I think if we're power ranking. Montana? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. If we're power ranking events that I've been to, that Beguile party, it has to be number one. Okay. It was so good. Oh, but I didn't put it together like, oh, well, Beguile's behind this party, and that's probably why it's good. But we they deserve a lot of credit, I think, for throwing good parties. Okay. Yeah, no matter who they partner with. So, um, what do we do? Uh, there's two stages. One's a secret stage. It's behind Dovetail. Dovetail. And then there's a big stage that's on the street in between the two breweries. Yeah. So, that was the layout. Um, you can go inside each brewery. Um, I don't. I think. Well, Beguile has their special tappings in their uh, in their garage, yeah. where you know deliveries or whatever go. And Dovetail has uh, four different bars, so you can go upstairs and downstairs inside of Dovetail. The secret, the secret bar outside of right. Dovetail where the concert is, and, and then they have a. Slushies in the summertime. They have slushies, they slushies this year too, outside. So it was a. Uh, and instead of sour cherry, it was apple. It was sour apple. Oh. Really, not bad. All right, all right. And then Dovetail has a beer garden as well that runs along the train tracks. Okay, cool. So this is a very good party. Yeah, I just got tied up here uh, with different things. I had family in on Saturday, so I couldn't make it. I did open a bottle of Bourbon County coffee from last year. Yeah, I was just looking at that. Um, I was going to give you the blend. Of um, coffee? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this had just been sitting in the fridge. We bring up, you know, we were talking about this Oktoberfest from Revolution that was being sold real cheap. I don't know why. I can't even pronounce that shit. Oh. I got Bur- Burni- Why am I doing It's... <laughs> Burundi? Burundi? It's, it's some single origin and some part Burundi of... Burundi sounds yeah. right to me. Uh, but I opened that up after it's sitting here for a long time. I think... Maybe Sergio brought that over, or someone. Maybe maybe Steve Wyatt. It tasted great. We I had it at the end of the night. It was kind of like we had it with dessert. It was like. So like still like coffee, or does it like some? It, does it does it start to round into something else? You think? Um, it wasn't very strong coffee flavor. I think it was like hint of it there, but it was like on that like ice 
coffee realm or maybe it's still there but maybe it got a little watered down but yeah big stout and i think that one's maybe underappreciated i actually forgot that they had a coffee last year yeah we were, we were talking in the pre-show. I'm like, I don't know if that was this year, but... Because that first year coffee came out it, with vanilla. It was a huge hit. Oh, like the first BCS coffee ever? Yeah. And it was like, whoa. And it was so much coffee. And it was big and bold. And now it's more balanced in there to kind of like complement each other versus like, we fucking threw so much coffee. All and caps. Like big hugs. Kind of, when big hugs first came out, that was like all coffee. And they've brought it back down but it's like sometimes i want big coffee and yeah sometimes you want like this was very mellow good dessert yeah coffee flavors but yeah and i think um well I'll, you do this a lot and then um at that event when they had the coffee they had a station of intelligentsia coffee that single origin coffee that they put in the beer yeah um just appreciating coffee with nothing in it you know, me and you've had that talk. I don't really do it, but you were like, I drink it like that all the time. Yeah, you drink black coffee. Right. And all I'm day, and I'm day. like, what the fuck? This guy's a fucking psycho. But now the more I drink coffee, I'm like, okay, if you don't put anything in them, these coffees are different. And you won't know that if you're fucking doing all this. Yeah, when you have shitty diner coffee with nothing in it, you're like, Yeah, that shitty <laughs> diner coffee yeah. makes you appreciate your good coffee. I'm saying and you're so. You're like, I put Two sugars and milk in my shitty diner coffee. It tastes just like your single origin intelligentsia. <laughs> it tastes like coffee and milk, uh, coffee and uh, sugar, so, sugar coffee. Just sugar and milk. Yeah. It's these um, it's these Oktoberfest man, okay. Evanston Tall Boys man. <laughs> Got us going loopy. But so, yeah, yeah, I'm I glad. Wanted, I'm glad it's still good. Yeah, I wanted to mention that especially with uh, Black Friday coming up. Uh, Nick's gonna go to this the tasting so look for photos of that I'm bcs that. friday man yeah. november 1st yeah so are we supposed to say that that's when you're going uh, so yeah. look for that oh yeah november that's right first on the feeds <laughs> okay yeah yeah that's true actually um and so then we were coming, like stalk you like, we were yeah, take me with you <laughs> <laughs> you know we were thinking um so it sounds like we're gonna try we're going to try BCS, and then the same week is going to be FOBAP. Right. I'm missing BCS and FOBAP. But you, you're doing something cool. Honestly, like if, if somebody offered these two on the table, I might take the one you're doing. Okay, okay. But, oh, but we were saying, like, well, when is prop day? If FOBAP and BCS are hitting the, are, are happening. So next, next going to this preview thing, November 1st for BCS. FOBAP is November 2nd and November 3rd, which... I guess you can probably still get tickets for it. Third, third and fourth, yeah. Nobody is talking about this thing. I didn't realize it until today when I was mapping, wrapping my head around Black Friday coming. I'm not spending a ton of time on Instagram or Facebook, so I don't even see if there's like any sponsored ads running, but I don't see much, so I hope people that need to know know. A non... Well... Because there's some of the ads aren't made for us because they assume we're going to go to it. Lately, Facebook's been all fucked up, okay. offering me ads for stuff that I'm like, I don't really. Why are you doing this? Clicked on something. I clicked on something. Yeah. <laughs> um. What was I gonna say? Your kids probably have logged into your on your computer. They better knock, that, knock that shit off. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of dumb. Messing up your Facebook pixel on all these sites. Now my algo's fucked. I'm putting you up <laughs> for adoption. No. What was I going to say? You know, two things, man. I think it's stout season all year, right? But then also, um, you know, for that party, Fobab, a barrel aged stout hasn't won in at least two years. Because last year it was the anniversary of uh, Duck Duck Goes. And then I forget who won a year before that, but it was like a sour from like North Carolina or some shit. It's going to be a non alcoholic year. They, they, do have, they do have a NA Lounge and a Lager Lounge this year. Which kind of makes sense because it's a barrel aged stout event or a barrel aged beer event. Oh, but the I, barrel aged stouts haven't won a, for a couple of years, and I don't know. Maybe it's kind of known mostly for that, even though there's more to it than that. It's kind of known for that, and uh, our people. Maybe I'm just thinking of why people aren't talking about it. If are people burned out on it? But that's the we often talk about the. The value of these stouts, like the 
the, the Goose Island stuff, you know, it's still sitting on the shelf. It's kind of expensive. Uh, Revolution Deep Woods, $40, $50 for these four packs. Like, it's a lot. So you go buy a ticket to Fobab, you get to try all these beers that are like $10 a pour. 8 to 10 no, $10, 10 to $12 probably a pour everywhere you go. Go there, and if you get, what, four of them, you've already, like, broke even on your ticket. If you went there, every beer you got would be the coolest beer at your local bar if you went to a bar. Whatever bar you went to, it's a room full of the coolest beers you could probably find at your local bar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, Fobab's, Fobab's, pretty, Fobab's pretty, pretty okay. Pretty good party. I think it's still our premier event. What time is Saturday? I don't know what time my flight gets in. I think I get in at like 5 o'clock. Um, awards are usually kind of early, right? I probably can't make it. But there is a night session. You know, one year I went out of town and I came back. But I came back that day. I landed at like 2. And then I went to the awards at night. But, I mean, I showered and went and got tacos. But then I went straight to the awards. Uh, it was tough, though. But it was it was fun. It was a fun whirlwind. I also haven't seen any info to us about media information no. about Fobab even. No. I haven't seen that. So, not to say like... Oh, you think we're, you think we're done? We're, we you, weren't invited. You think we're, we're not involved? You think we're, chop, we're, we're, we're chopped liver? Guinness cut us off. <clears throat> Goose. You know, we, we got invited to Goose, but they didn't listen to the episode where we had wild speculations. They will after this. <laughs> after this, they're going to go check the, check the tape. Temperance is gonna cut us off. You know they they really could have um. Because they got the might Re- might reach might meets right series that should be coming out soon. They could have really given us a stein to drink out of, you know, like what the fuck was that? that... Rev, we don't know where their Oktoberfest is gonna stand. They could cut us off here on the Deep Woods info. Because Deep Woods comes out too, and like. Uh, I feel like Deep was on. Um, Deep was already on the way. I think it's a. I think it's a week or two before Black Friday. Where do you think um, Prop Day is going to land in this lineup of the next in the next six to eight weeks? Where are you predicting there will be a Prop Day? If there will, there's got to be a Prop Day. The weekend after Fobat, right? The weekend after Fobat. Okay. Yeah. But they because you do it the tickets? if you do it because Fob- it's a lottery, remember? Prop sure. day is a lottery, and then if you if they pick you, then you can buy a ticket. They're trying to figure out how to, you know, since the halls now own Goose Island, they're trying to figure out how to. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know why I fucking ask. <laughs> There's no one to do the lottery. But you know, usually Prop Day is you get the the draw is that you get to drink these beers before Black Friday. Oh, but what you said a week after Fobab would still be before Black Friday. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. I think that that makes sense. Okay. So like the 17th, that whatever that week is of November, the week before Black Friday. Yeah, they're just running out of days and even I was personally looking at this like I got kind of stuff every weekend until the end of the year. Oh shit. Sure. Oh, dude, it's going to be fucking Q1 2024 in no time. Right? Like that. It's going to go by like that. Which brings us closer to St. Patrick's Day. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. Uh, anything else we should mention before we get out of here? Um, no, man. Shout out to uh, Shirley. They had Darkness Day this weekend. Oh, cool. Um, my buddy Dan drove up there. It's like a six hour drive. Oh, but uh, he said there's a cola one uh, is one of the variants that he really liked. He, and there's one modeled after an Indian dessert. So it had a ton of cinnamon in it. Okay. So if they show up on draft, I would be curious about those two. Maybe there'll be a FOBAP. Oh, maybe it will be a FOBAP. I, I feel like Surly was there once. Uh, but... I don't know. Yeah. Oh, there. I haven't been to Darkness Day in every bit of 10 years. No. So, I, and I went one time. And it was a good hang. But what they do differently is they pour magnums of Surly. The owners of Surly, they come out, they give you a keg of coffee bender. They've come out and pour magnums of that darkness. Was back in the day, but now it's over at the new spot. And they're doing the same thing. Oh, they are. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a different vibe. It's different than what. Because the only thing you can compare it to is Dark Lord Day. And Floyd's is not pouring you any goddamn thing. 
So Unless it's, you're paying them. Exactly. So it's a nice touch to, to see that the owners are out there making sure there's no crazy lines and that you can try some cool shit while you're waiting. That's cool. So just shout out to them. And I've always admired that about that party. Awesome. So. Oh, well, uh, Nick, where can people find you when we're not here? Hey, man. I'm on Twitter, at Nicosio. And um, look for me around. I don't even know where I'm not at anymore. Look for me at Burning Bush. You, know. you can find me bringing my own mug to Burning Bush. You Burning yet? Bush. Not yet. Not yet. No. Uh, but Chicago Beer Pass is on Instagram. And episodes are on ChicagoBeerPass.com. We'll either be back drinking our full lineup next week or in another week. We may add one more to this. You know, round out with a good 14 or so. But, yeah, excited to see. If you had to, before we get out of here real quick, if you had to pick a winner right now without even tasting it, what would you put your money on? Um, Where's the Spiteful one? Spiteful's back here. I would say Spiteful. I'm going to go with this wild horse. This to steal. Okay. It's got the little hat on it, so. Oh, so that's your hat. Makes it makes it a winner in my book. I like the hat more than the Aunt Annie's pretzel. <laughs> All right. Take care. Cheers.